Okay, this um, series of videos is going to cover the first topic in the Edexcel um, additional chemistry course. Okay, so the title of this topic is uh, Atomic Structure and the Periodic Table. So we're going to start off by diving straight in and looking at the periodic table. Okay, now this uh, piece of genius in front of you tells chemists just an absolutely massive amount of informa information. It just can't be stressed how important this is um, to enable scientists, enable chemists to make predictions about chemicals, um, to be able to react different things together and predict what you're going to, uh, going to make. It gives you a massive amount of information, uh, which is why it's really, really important that we understand this in detail um, so we can take that forward and, uh, and apply it later on. Okay. At its absolute basic level, the periodic table is simply an arrangement or ordering of all the elements that exist in the universe. Okay, so um, on this one, I think there's um, about just about 90. But on the actual full periodic table, there's now 118 different elements, different building blocks that can make up any chemical in the universe. Okay, so absolute fundamentals, real basics of what we need to know. Firstly, is whether elements are metals or non-metals. Okay, now I'm hoping that if I were to give you a block of iron or an iron bar and say, is this a metal or a non-metal, you could say, yep, that is a metal. Okay, it conducts heat, it conducts electricity. Um, it's definitely a metal. Okay, but if I were to give you um, germanium, okay, you might not be so sure. Now, the rule that we follow is um, kind of straightforward. You just simply need to find this line here. Okay. So you need to find aluminium, which is used to make aluminium cans. It's used to make aeroplanes. It's clearly um, a metal. Okay. Silicon, uh, the main place this is found on Earth is actually a silicon dioxide, um, which is also known as sand or even glass. Okay. It's clearly a non-metal. Okay. So you've got a, a very obvious metal on the left, uh, a very obvious non-metal on the right. You find the gap between those, and then you need to fall down the stairs. Okay. So you just hit pretend there's an imaginary staircase here and you can draw yourself a line there. Anything to the left of this line is going to be a non-metal. Sorry, let me correct myself. Anything to the left of this line is going to be a metal. Okay, anything to the right of it is a non-metal. Right, the second thing we need to know is what we call these numbers going along the top here, okay? First thing to note is that it actually goes one, two, big gap, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, okay? These are the groups of the periodic table, okay? They tell us a lot about um, the different elements. Uh, at its most basic level, it tells us or gives us an idea about how the elements are going to react. So, for example, because potassium is in the same group as sodium, we make predictions that they're going to react in a similar way. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about atomic structure. It also, very importantly, tells us how many electrons are in that element's outer shell. So, for example, aluminium is in group 3, therefore it is going to have 3 electrons in its outer shell. Selenium is in group 6, therefore it will have 6 electrons in its outer shell. And again, that gives us a lot of information about how the elements are going to react. Okay, so groups... Um, are the uh, columns of the periodic table. We count them on the top, we go one, two, we jump over this um, group of metals here, we go three, four, five, six, seven, zero. Later on in the course, we will speak about this special section here. Just for the time being, we need to know these are called the transition metals. Okay, to me that kind of makes sense because a transition is like a gap and we have a gap or a big jump from group two over to group three. Okay, so group groups go along the top. Now down the side, okay, we have our periods. Periods, okay. So the rows of the periodic table, um, we call the periods. So at the top here, with hydrogen and helium in it, we have period one. Okay, then lithium starts period two, okay, all the way along to neon. Period three starts with sodium, period four, five, six, seven. Okay, the reason they're called uh, periods, okay, is that the um, properties of these elements repeat every time you go to a new period. Okay, so kind of similar to what we said before, if we have lithium, 
okay, and we go along this entire period. When we get back to the start of the next period, the properties repeat. So sodium again will have similar properties, or we predict would have similar properties to lithium. Okay, so let's just uh, pick one example. Let's just pick uh, as a random one arsenic. Okay, you might be asked what group and period it's in. You simply need to find the group on the top, that is that in group five. You then need to count down along the sides. One, two, three, four. Okay, so arsenic is in group five, period four. Okay, we also need to know a bit about where this periodic table came from. And I've kind of hinted there at how powerful this is. It gives us a lot of information about the elements, um, but it's not natural that we have arranged the elements this way. Okay? It's not, you know, it's not something that's, that's kind of fell into place. Uh, it took hundreds and hundreds of years for people to be able to organise the elements in this way. And one of the real influential key players in that was a fella called Dmitry Mendeleev, um, who not only had one of the most amazing beards I've ever seen, he was also a real genuine scientific genius. Okay, And his genius, you know, it seems very subtle, it seems very slight, but actually it was incredibly novel for the time. Okay, So... Mendeleev wasn't the first person to arrange um, the elements by similar properties, okay? He did, yeah, he kind of built on earlier rare scientist work and he said, you know, magnesium's pretty similar to calcium, okay? Let's put them in the same group together. Let's have eight elements in between them, okay? So he wasn't the first person to do that, but, you know, that's how he set up his table originally. But he then got to elements like aluminium, okay? And he went eight, eight elements along and he said, oh, hang on, there's, there's nothing really that would fit in that gap. Okay, Titanium doesn't fit there, it reacts differently to aluminium. Calcium um, is more reactive than aluminium, it, it doesn't really fit there either. Um, I think, I think that there, there's going to be something that we haven't discovered yet that is going to fit underneath aluminium. Okay, and that was, that was really genius because he was the first person who said, I know that we don't know everything yet. Okay, it was real revolutionary thinking. Not only did he predict the elements that didn't exist, he also predicted exactly what they would be like. He said, oh, I know, um, I know, for example, that aluminium has this mass. Okay, I know that below it, the element has, you know, this mass. Therefore, I predict the element that we're going to discover will have this mass. I also predict it will be a solid. I also predict it will have this exact melting point. Okay? And at, later on, as these elements started to be discovered, he was actually proven perfectly correct. So his predictions were all true. Okay? So that was a real, um, you know, real influential, real important, um, important kind of discovery, if you like, that Mendeleev made. Okay? He left gaps for elements that were undiscovered, and he also made predictions about their properties. You do need to know um, some of the other differences between Mendeleev table um, and the modern one. Um, other than the fact that Mendeleev left gaps and there were no gaps in the current periodic, periodic table, you also need to know that Mendeleev um, ordered his elements by their atomic mass. Okay, He didn't know at that time about electrons, neutrons, protons. He simply um, measured the mass of um, the different elements. So he said that you know, hydrogen has a mass of one, lithium has a mass of seven. Okay, And that was how he arranged them. Nowadays, we have actually got two numbers. So again, you've got your, your hydrogen is one, lithium is seven. However, the periodic table is arranged now by the atomic number. Okay, so it simply counts up from one, two, three, four. And we're going to look at what that actually means later on. Okay, so Mendeleev left gaps in his periodic table. He arranged the elements by their atomic mass. Okay, in common, they both um, have elements arranged in groups in periods, and they both had elements with the similar properties in the same groups.